Today, inshallah, I want to talk about a hadith. The scholars, they said, it's from Usul al-Akhlaq. It's the source of Akhlaq. And this hadith, narrated by Abu Hurairah, radiyallahu ta'ala. Anyone knows Abu Hurairah? Father of cats, yeah. Hmm? Father of cats. Yes, exactly. But what's his name? Abu Hurairah. Abu Hurairah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, even the scholars, they don't really, they, they have a lot of debates about what was his name, actually. Most likely his name, Abdul Rahman bin Sakhd. But there is a lot of other opinions, which is Abdullah or Abdul Rahman. And some of them, they said, no, his name was something else. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam changed it to Abdul Rahman. Anyway, he's from Dus. This is the tribe of Abu Hurairah, Qabila Dus. And this tribe in Yemen. So he went so far from Yemen to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he, the most reporter to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He reports a hadith more than any other Sahabi. More than uh, Aish. More than Aish. No one reports a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than Abu Hurairah. And even though his Islam was the seventh of Hijrah, that means he only like roughly he, he saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for four years. So it's not that long. But he stayed with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was from Ahl al which means he slept at the masjid waiting to the Prophet Sallallahu When the Prophet Sallallahu comes, he sits with the Prophet. He goes with him. He serves the Prophet Sallallahu Go outside, go with the Prophet Sallallahu He do nothing except following the Prophet Sallallahu That's why he gained a lot of knowledge. And he used to appreciate this. He said, I was working to fill my stomach. And this is like, that's exactly what, what he, he used to do. He used to go like say, I will do this for you if you feed me. So he get nothing, he, he, he doesn't even get money. He get food. Because he have no desire to eat and just come. He want to eat and whatever time left, he leave it to the Prophet that's why when, when the Sahaba when the Sahaba was like complaining about like you, you said a lot of hadith and you just saw the Prophet وسلم, one time Umar bin al-Khattab complained about one hadith that Abu Hurairah reported and he took Umar bin al-Khattab and went to Aisha and Aisha confirmed this hadith and a lot of Sahaba even Aisha she said like you said a lot of hadith but he was really sure that the Prophet said these hadith. He was taking notes, I think. Was no, he taking no, notes? No, 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 not, not, not him, actually. There's another Sahabi. Hmm. He was taking notes. notes. Actually, Abu Hurairah, he wasn't taking notes and he was disagree with anyone taking notes. One time, I think Abdul Malik bin Marwan, when, when he was the, the leader of Al Madinah, he asked Abu Hurairah to come and ask. Uh, a guy to say each hadith that Abu Hurairah would say. And he reported all, put it, like write it down. Mm. But no one knows, like he was oh. hiding this guy. And when Abu Hurairah went, after like a few months, he called Abu Hurairah again. And he said like, do you remember the hadith? And he asked the same guy to review. And then he said, there is no one letter 
اكسترا انت حالي ولا نوت وورك سو هي سيد تو ابو هريره لايك وي تراي تو تيست يور حديث هي سيد ناو وين يو تيست ماي حديث تيك اول وات يو رايت اواي وايب ات اوت بيكوز هي ديسجريد تو رايت اني ثينج مور ذان ذا ايات اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى هي سيد وي هير ات فروم ذا بروفيت دو ذا سيم Report it with the sama, we call it, with the hearing, not with the writing. Because people at that time, they, they were like really have the ability to remember. Yeah. They don't like really get distracted just like we these days. Like we get distracted with a lot of, like we call it smartphones. Yeah. Which is like, it's a smart devices actually, but it makes us yeah. stupid. Because we rely on it. Mm-hmm. And and wallahi, wallahi, I, I, I really noticed this with my son. Like when some people come and, and they, they give him like the iPad or they give him like, they open the TV. I saw like his reaction at that day, it's so bad. He can't remember. I tried to teach him, but he can't. But if, if the same day, like same thing, when he wake up he doesn't see anything whatever i say he catch right away now two years i said qul huwa he said qul huwa allahu ahad i have a difficulty with ahad at the beginning because he knows asad i said qul huwa allahu asad astaghfirullah and then I, it needs like a lot of time to change it to ahad but still like he can remember right away but whenever he see he sees the iPad or the TV, wallahi that day, he will get nothing from me. So that's why I think this is like very bad things. It's a smart devices, but yeah. it makes our life worse if we don't really yeah. use it well. A body is perfect, man. If the brain doesn't need any part of the body, doesn't use it, and it yes. just closes off. Yes, and exactly. Saves energy. Exactly. Yeah. So subhanAllah, it's, it's shutting us Yeah. Oh, so we should be careful about it. Yeah. Anyway, so Abu Hurairah, he has the ability to remember. I just like want to know he, he, he wasn't except to write anything down. And actually, the Iman of Abu Hurairah, it's in the scale of another Sahabi. Because he was in Yemen, he doesn't see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, he became Muslim because he saw Al-Tufayl bin Amr al dusi from the same tribe. And this guy in the early prophethood, subhanAllah, he went to Mecca. And when he went there, Quraysh, the, the tribe of the Prophet وسلم, they used to welcome anyone comes to Mecca and they say, warning him from the Prophet He said, there is like a magician there, like with his word, he can like really affect you and you will be lost. So when he see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this Al-Tufayl bin Amr al-Dusi, not Abu Hurairah, he used to put something in, in his ears so he will not hear the Prophet. And then he said like, I was thinking like, why I'm doing this? I'm not stupid. I can like really tell the difference between like a magician and I can see the right and the wrong. So I said, I took it out. And I went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and by Allah, I never healed a truth more than the truth that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought at that meeting. He was saying the Quran and he said, I never came across something like the Quran. So he became Muslim. And what he did, He left Mecca, he went to his people. And he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after a while. They said between 50 to maybe 80 Muslims from his tribe. He brought a lot of people from his tribe. One of them, Abu Hurairah. So imagine, like he, he, he was a Muslim because 
So all, all these ahadith yeah. that comes from Abu Hurairah, it's also in the scale of At-Tufayl bin Amr al-Dusi. He take these all from his ears and he listen to the haq, to the right. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the rewards for this. So sometimes like you do something small, but if you have the right intention and the will for da'wah, you don't know. If all the a'mal of Abu Hurairah in his scale in the Day of Judgment, that will be like really heavy. Especially like, as, as, as I said, there is no one report hadith to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than Abu Hurairah. I think it's only in, 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 Bukhari, and, in Bukhari and Muslim both around like 300 to 400 hadith and each one almost 90 he have like special like Bukhari have 90 that does not exist in Muslim and Muslim has 90 does not exist in Bukhari and all his hadith all together like Sahih and weak it's almost 4,000 4 to 5,000 so it's a lot of hadith a lot of hadith yes and there is a lot of chains to Abu Hurairah. Bukhari said there is almost 800 students to Abu Hurairah. They listen the hadith from Abu Hurairah. And he was appreciated that actually. He, he, so once he was reading the salah and he stood and he said, Alhamdulillah, that I was working to fill my stomach and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me the leader. And I was working to a lady. She became my wife. I was working to her just to feed me. And then she became my wife. And this was the barakah of the suhbah. To be the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is Abu Hurairah. So he reported this hadith. And this hadith actually in Jami' al-Tirmidhi. Anyone knows the tirmidhi tirmidhi he is the student of Al-Bukhari. We have, we have two Sahih books, which is Al-Bukhari and Muslim. It's very famous. All people know them. And we have four books we call it the Sunan. And by the way, tirmidhi he, he called it Jami' al-Sahih. Same thing, like he, he, he wants to write the Sahih book. But they call it Sunan, it's less than Bukhari and Muslim. And he's the student of Al Bukhari. And he's from Tirmid. It's in Uzbekistan, actually. It's a very famous city in Uzbekistan. A lot of scholars from there. But SubhanAllah, a lot of scholars from Uzbekistan. Yeah, yeah SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the ability to, like, even Bukhari and uh, Tirmidhi once, like we know the Bukhari, like when when he was doing the hadith, when they tried to test him about that. You know the story? Yeah. So Bukhari, when, when he went to Baghdad, it was the capital of the knowledge. So the scholars, they hear about Bukhari, but they said like, let's test him. They know he has the ability to remember. So they fake they brought actually 10 people. Each one fake the chain of hadith for 10 hadiths. Mm -hmm. That's mean like 100 hadith. So he was listening. He doesn't know. And each one brought one, 10 hadiths with a fake chain. They just change the people mm -hmm. and say the hadith. And the Bukhari was listening. And then after they finished, they said, you, you said the hadith this way, this way, this way, this way, with the, with the fake chain, he remembered. And this, this is wrong. The right is this one. So after he correct 100 hadith, mentioning the fake, and then the right one, all the scholars, they said, now we know you are like the best. <laughs> so Tirmidhi, he has the same ability, subhanAllah. Once he was like, he have some hadith 
for some people he never met. And he suddenly met one of them, like he's a, an old man. And he looks to his book and he couldn't find it. And he asked me, like, I have your, your, your hadith written in my books. So he couldn't find these two books. So he felt shy, but he remembered the hadith. So he took like an empty book, never writing it, and he started asking about the hadith. And the shaykh was saying the hadith. And then he looked to the book, and he saw the book empty. There is nothing in it. And he said like, you don't shy? You lie to me? He said, no, that's what happened to me. And I know your hadith letter by letter. And he said, okay, show me. Because he, 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 he didn't believe in him. He said, show me. And he mentioned all the hadith. He said, this is letter by letter. He said, okay, I will test you. And he said another hadith for him. And he repeated right away without mistakes. Then he believed in him. So subhanAllah, they, they are like really, they have the ability like to do things now, these days we are not able. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I always <coughs> mention, they don't have actually the fitan that we have these days. I mentioned what happened to Shafi'i. Shafi'i, he was reading the books, always cover this page, read this page. And then when he memorized this page, he covered this page and read this page. And when he was asked why you do this, he said, if I take my hand out, I will memorize them both. So I need one by one to remember which page. <laughs> So that means like he looked to it, that's it, done. Photography. Copy and paste. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. We call it photographic memory. Yes. Yeah. And once he said, I lost this ability. So I went to my sheikh and I asked, I can't remember anything. I can't memorize. So he said, I complained to my sheikh, the bad memorization. فأرشدني إلى ترك المعاصي. And he advised me to leave the ma'asi, the sins. And he told me وأخبرني إن علم الله نور. The knowledge of Allah is a light. And the light of Allah لا يهدى لعاصي. Will never, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never give his light to a sinner. And then he said, I thought in my mind what I did and he remembered he, he, he saw a lady and he looked to this actually part of the lady only like a few centimeters from the from foot the yeah. that's the sin Okay, then so he, he asked he, why we can't memorize that, that's why we can't <laughs> <laughs> that's why we can't memorize now yeah. how do we avoid this situation that's why I say this is like very difficult. It's it's a fitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save it all, save us all from these fitan. But still wallahi sometimes I see people it's very easy for them to avoid these things, even though it's in front of them. And sometimes it's very difficult. And for me, I try my best I always like go to the sky train and go like You're among back. People. Yes. Sometimes it's very easy to avoid and sometimes it's very difficult. So I realize it depends on my situation. It, do it doesn't actually depend on their situation because there is like almost naked women everywhere. But sometimes I, I can't see them. And sometimes I can't, like, it's hard, ha hardly, like, avoiding them. I need, like, to keep my eyes. And then, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, or you need to open the Quran and, and, and read in order not to look to them. It's very difficult because it's in, in your mind. 
But sometimes when you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's like all dunya it means nothing to you. Uh, Keep it to that. We didn't reach the hadith yet. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm no, supposed no, to go. In this situation, I'm looking at the Quran, this, is, this topic, and I want to be more. Okay, keep the question after, inshallah. So, I prepared a lot of talk about this hadith, but I have to shorten it. We already took a lot of time. So, this hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said, Min husni islam al mar tarkuhu ma la yani. From the perfect Islam for the Muslim, or from the perfection Islam, is to leave the useless things, or to leave what is, if there is no benefit of the things, to leave it. And there is a similar ayah to this. Allah subhanahu wa taala, when He described describes the the believers, He said. عن اللذو معرضون about the useless talk they actually reject or they avoid the useless talk so that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers and even Imam Shafi'i he said if you want to extend your mind you have to do three things Sit with the ulama, sit with the scholars, and then sit with the salihin, and avoid ma la ya'nik, avoid the useless things. And if you look to it, wallahi, there is a lot of hikmah, a lot of wisdom in this. Sit with the ulama, you will think like them, you will get the benefit. Think, sit with the salihin, you will know this dunya is useless. You will not think about it. You will keep your mind focusing on the knowledge. So it's extending your mind. And avoid the useless things. That will not keep your mind busy with something useless. Will not benefit you. So you will get benefit from the knowledge that you gain from the ulama. SubhanAllah, this is exactly... Like perfect. When I look to it, like it's a lot of wisdom in it. And the Prophet وسلم, said in, in, in the authentic hadith, "Wahras ala ma yanfa'uk," and hold and look after what gonna benefit you. Whatever extra, it's it's nothing. It's nothing. So you shouldn't. And even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is like a very good hadith also. He said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmi al-akhir fal yaqul khayran aw li yasmit. He said, whoever believe in Allah and the last, j- la- the last day, if he want to say something, he should say something good or let him keep quiet. So whether you say something good or keep it quiet is, is, is better for you. And this is actually what the scholars, they said. They said, actually, they set a rule. It's a very good rule. They said, if you want to talk, you should know how to be quiet first. How to close your mouth. If you know how to close your mouth, then you will not make mistakes when you talk. And this is this is very good. And we missed this in, in, in our like before we used to send our children to the Mashaikh, to the Salihin, to the to the pious people. And they, they used to teach them this. I still remember like when I was with the Shiyukh, they, they told me like, Oh, you are not allowed to ask the Shaykh while he's walking. There is a lot of hikmah. You are not allowed to ask the Sheikh while he's eating. You are not allowed to do this and this when the Sheikh talk. You can't say anything. Listen to him. And they sometimes, like, even if you say something 
like write. Sometimes like they, they, they speak with, with a student and the student like say, oh, this is the answer. And he's 100% correct. And the sheikh gets angry. He said like, no one asked you. Why you said it? He said, this is the right things. He said, I know it's the right. But if you don't know how to close your mouth now, you will never know. And then you will say right and wrong. I still remember they said, he said exactly, he said like, even Imam Ali, Imam Ali bin Abi Talib, he said, I wish if I have a uh, neck just like the ba'ir, just like the camel, so long. So the words will take a long time to come from my mouth. So I would think about it before it goes, because when it goes, that's it. You have many, I mean, like sayings about talking. Yes. So he said, like one time, I, I guess, it, you are you are the owner of the word before you said it. Yes. And you are the uh, the slave of slave of the word after. You Yes. Yeah. That's why, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we have the niyyah to do something bad, it's better to leave it. So, He will not charge us unless we do something according to it, or we say something according to it. So, if you say, you're responsible. You're responsible. That's why they said, being silent better than talking. Being silent, you are safe. When you talk, there is three possibilities. Whether it's a good word, so it will be registered as a hasana, or it's a bad, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will charge you for it or it's just like chit chat, it's nothing, and it's waste of time. So they said, one third of the talk is good, and the rest is, whether it's waste of time or say it, or bad things. So we should think this when, when we try to talk. So I'll return like, we need to teach ourselves how to be quiet before we teach ourselves how to talk. Because if you can't listen, you can't. And, and I see like this now, it's like really common illness. All people, they want to talk and say anything, whether they have the knowledge or not. Well, I, I was like in many, many cases brothers come and ask me and I see like a lot of brothers they answer right away I don't really want to be like tough with the brothers but sometimes I said like they didn't ask you when they go to you and ask you go ahead at least answer you are allowed to answer or not and subhanallah sometimes even the scholars they have to remember this if you have the knowledge you have to say it. If you don't have the notes, there is no shame. People better than us, they said it. Ibn Umar, he used to say, I don't know. I don't know any ayah or any hadith. I don't know. Imam Malik, once he was asked about like 10 mas'al, 10 things in Islam about Sharia. Nine of them, he said, I don't know. But he's still the Imam of the whole Medina, the, the, the city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they used to say, لا يفتى ومالك في المدينة. No one able to say anything or make a fatwa while Malik in Medina. So in Medina, no one do any fatwa except Imam Malik. And he was asked about a lot of things and he said, I don't know. If you don't know, say, I don't know. But... Apparently, like a lot of Muslims, they know everything 
they, they can say. And, and wallahi, there is some, some brothers, like, I was wondering, like, they can't keep quiet. If you ask them about Islam, they will answer you. If you ask them about, like, physics, they will answer you. Math, they will ask, answer you. Like, <laughs> even if, say, like, oh, there is some people in Mars, they said, like, oh, I know him, he wearing, like, red hat. Subhanallah. Just like two days ago, there's there's a guy who was like telling me about a brother. He's like, they they he, he used to say a lot of things, whether it's right or wrong. And they they put him in a small test. It's it's actually it's, it's not funny things to say. So there's a there's a guy. He doesn't know English that much. So there's a a guy. He he told him like. I used to smoke. And he asked him, like, what kind of cigarettes you smoke? He said, black tea. There is nothing. He said, oh, I know, it's, it's very good. So like, what is it? <laughs> black tea. <laughs> there is no such, like, cigarettes as, like, black tea, but still, like, he knows these kinds of things. So, subhanAllah. So, this hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Useless things, we should avoid. Useless talk, we should avoid. And this is the source of having the good akhlaq. Because if you can control yourself, this is the key. Now, when I said the scholars, they said, if you know how to be quiet, keep your mouth shut, you will be able to say the right thing in the right time. That's absolutely true. Because sometimes people will talk about a lot of things. And if you don't have the knowledge, or if you think it's a useless majlis, Use this sitting. Why you stay? Waste your time with. Why we waste our time <coughs> with useless things? Do you know when when they said al Muslim? That means what is your really uh, your assets in this life? It's the time. When the time goes, some of you, part of you, goes with the time. So with this time, there is an angel like writing down what, what, what you are doing. Ibadah, it's, it's in your account. Sin, it's in your debt, right? Use these things, it will be empty on the Day of Judgment. More best. Yeah. Exactly. And subhanAllah, you shouldn't go and one of these has you shouldn't talk too much, you shouldn't ask too much. And this is also you shouldn't ask your brothers about things it's not it's not gonna benefit you. Like you ask like why you did this and why you did this to your wife, especially this there is a weak hadith actually. They said, لا يسأل الرجل فيما ضرب امرأته. It's a weak hadith, it's super weak. We know it's weak. But it's still like, sometimes you find it in the books. And um, once I, I found very like, it's a terrible translation for this hadith. The hadith, what the Prophet Sallallahu said, no one should ask the man why he hit his wife. This is the hadith. And the reason, like even the reason for this, like because he would maybe you will force him to lie. It's not your business. It's something between him and his wife. Right? So basically, whether he will not say some anything to you or he would lie in order to avoid like these talk. So why you force your brother to lie or, or why 
why you ask this question. But once I found an, an English book, they translate this hadith as the man will not be questioned about hitting his wife. So now it's like everyone is allowed to hit his wife. So subhanAllah, sometimes like even the translations, they go so far or maybe he, he, they, they don't have the knowledge. They do it on purpose. Some, I don't, I, sometimes I, I don't know, maybe. Because there is a guy at, like how I find out about this hadith, there is a guy, he called me and he said like, there is a hadith, I don't know how to read. He, he used to read hadith in masjid each uh, Salat Fajr. After the Fajr, he reads the hadith. And he said, he called me and he said like, yesterday I avoid to read a hadith and I don't know what how, how to say, especially there is a, like some ladies attending Salat Al-Fajr. I don't know what the meaning of it. And he said, uh, the man will not be questioned about his hitting his wife. I said, there is no such hadith like this. He said, no, 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 this is a hadith. And he gave me the reference. And then when I went to the first, subhanAllah, like how, 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 the, how can they like translate this hadith in this way? That's mean like go and hit your wife. It's, it's allowed. And actually the Prophet ﷺ said, the best of you will not hit the wives. And subhanAllah. So, again, in this hadith, the scholars, they said, if you want to complete your iman, leave the useless things. Leave the useless talk. Leave the useless questions. And if you don't, some of them, they said, it's from Khudlan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left you to do the useless things in your life and you will fail in the test. And some of them, they said, you will never be or have the complete Iman unless you do this. So, inshaAllah, we should keep this in our mind and we listen to the reminder and follow the best of it, inshaAllah. Jazakumullah khair, barakallah fikum. Any questions? Yeah. Yes. The, the train, uh, you mentioned that uh, avoiding things with the Quran. Is it appropriate if you have a circumstance where, like, Shaitani stuff is around here and uh, you are trying to avoid, uh, pay attention uh, away from those things? So you read the Quran, you mention like right? so, so is it okay to, uh, in this situation, you can read the cloud or not, uh, iPad or phone and reading stuff the Quran? Yes, well, why it's not allowed to read Quran? Like if your people are talking something. In talking, no, no, you are reading Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَيْهُ وَأَنْصِرُوا When the Quran, when someone recites Quran, you have to listen to it. To give intention to the Quran. Attention to the Quran. And you can't leave the Quran or someone recite the Quran and you don't give an attention to it. It's not allowed. But you are reading the Quran, you focusing on Quran, it's absolutely allowed. Okay. Let the people do whatever they want. They live their life, they waste their time, they do whatever. You read the Quran? That's it. It's more than enough, alhamdulillah. Yes, no problem. And you want to open the mushaf or open the phone? It's absolutely up to you. Okay? But I still refer prefer the mushaf, it's way better than the phone. Sometimes like call, yeah, come to you, distract. text, mm. it distract you from really reflecting the ayat of Quran, and it's bad to your eyes, and it feels different than the mushaf. Jazakumullah khair.